Good day and welcome to the second edition of the Wedgetail video. It's six years since we did the last one and there's been a lot of detail and production processes and things like that have improved in that time. But we're going to look at all the interesting stuff that's been added to the campus since then. The Wedgetail is a slide on design. Uh, you can remove it from the ute and be able to use the ute for other purposes and store it. It's also very stable for freestanding camping when you drive the ute away. It's easy to drive, it's easy up tracks or on the highway, um, it's easy to park. Uh, you can tow a boat uh, or whatever. Okay. The wedge tail is no wider than the body of the ute, at least in this case, and about as high as a roof rack with something on it on the top. Uh, there's a stone guard on the front that will help to minimise stone damage from the front there. The tray is an ex a very heavy duty design, purpose designed for the camper. Uh, it's very, very tough. There's four storage boxes underneath, so there's somewhere to put recovery gear uh, and rubbish. Whatever you create, there's room in under there to take it back out and not leave a mess behind. Underneath, this tray has four max tracks. You can use those or similar. And a shovel is under there for helping with recovery. And in the back, there's a, a grey water tank. The, the departure angle of this tray is far better, better than a well back. Right, on this side of the camper, we've got the lockable water filler to put water into your water tank. 90 litres of water in there. We have outside access to closed storage. We also have inside access to closed storage. There's two four kilogram gas cylinders there. They last a very long time when we're camping. From a weight distribution point of view, we've got gas cylinders, the deep cycle battery, water tank, there's room to store a generator inside, there's a big fridge on the other side and the stand. So all the heavy dense stuff is down line on the, uh, and up the front for better weight distribution. Here we have a second closed storage area. Just do this and they just come out. You can undo the door and they go in as well for access from inside. That's the winch to wind and open and close the camper. This is the cover for the uh, space heater inside, it can be minus 5 degrees outside and 22 degrees inside the camper. Oh, that's nice. There's a mains pressure water inlet there and your 240 volts. So if you're in a camping ground and you're being charged for those things, you can have a lovely long shower. The hot water system is behind here. It works on gas or 240 volts or both together. So you can have a long shower again. The water from the sink comes out there, the grey water. The shower, when it's down, the inside shower comes out there. In the bush, you can dump that to the ground. If you're in a caravan park or camping ground, you can put sullage hoses, grey water hoses into their drains. You can collect it in buckets and take it away somewhere. And we also can collect the water in our grey water tank underneath. Here we have the outside shower. Works really well, we like that. During the day, covered in salt and sand, mud, uh, fish scales. Good place to rinse off out here. The trouble is when the sun goes down, campers have uh, their shower then, because it's going to get too cold otherwise. Puts all soap over the ground, which doesn't make anybody very happy with them. They step out and sitting around the campfire, they get campfire soot, smoke, air a guard, go to bed filthy. We wait and we have our shower inside. So the outside shower is good for a quick rinse off, but to not to deal with grey water and to be clean when you go to bed. This gives us access to our toilet. All right, on the passenger side, the tray again. Uh, this is a raised vehicle but the tray is relatively low. That helps with side slope performance, going through corners, and keeps the camper in behind the cab more for better wind resistance, reduced wind resistance, should I say. Um, it does create a problem though, because flat trays often have problems with back surging fuel. So we've redesigned the inlet for the fuel. So you can go to a truck stop and put a high flow filler in there, and it doesn't back surge. So just a bit more on the tray. On the top, is a 200 watt solar panel. Uh, it's been running for a couple of hours now. We just turn the fridge on and set it down to minus one and let the solar panel do its thing. It's still showing full charge in the house battery. So the solar panel is completely up to keeping the fridge cool. When you're driving along the road, the engine of the vehicle charges the house battery in the camper. As soon as you turn it off, so if you find a nice little town, you want to stop and have a cup of coffee and look around, it takes over. If you go for a walk down the beach or do some fishing or do some bushwalking, whenever you turn the engine off, immediately the solar panel takes over to charge the house battery. It's down nice and flat there, 
so it's not subject to rock strike, it's not creating wind resistance. It's somewhere to store the solar panel as well, out of harm's way up there. Okay, now in here we have our fridge. So this is an 80 litre fridge, you can put other types of fridge in if you want, but this is an 80 litre fridge freezer. It simply comes out like this. There we are, simple as that. Freezer, fridge and dairy. Underneath it are the stands for the camper, for freestanding the camper. Again, it's not a good space for anything else, but it's a good spot for them. They're down low and right up the front. Again, that weight distribution thing, the fridge, the stands, the water tank, the generator, the deep cycle battery and the gas cylinders all down low and against the front wall. So put that back in. Locks into place. Across the front here is a large filter. Um, the air comes in there under pressure. The faster you go, the more the air is coming in. All these things are heat pumps, they create heat. So it keeps the air all around the fridge nice and cool. It then goes inside the camper. When you're on a rough corrugated track with lots of bull dust around, everything's shaking and gradually dust will walk its way in through dust seals. Dust gets into everything. The owners all insist that these things are dust free. So the air comes in here, in through there, the faster you go, the more pressure you're creating, the whole interior is pressurized. In here we also have our 240 volt system and our 12 volt system. We've got a main battery charger. We've got our battery monitor and our switch to turn the hot water system on and off. We can access that from outside the camper. When we open the camper up, we can access it from inside. So at night time, if there's bugs and things flying around, it's horrible conditions out here, we don't have to come outside to maintain our electrical system. In the corner, it's a bit hard to see in this position. There's a clear tube going up and down that gives you uh, the water level in your water tank. Next to it, we've got the top part of our uh, kitchen. So these open up and it's a drawer system, very much like new kitchen design, they're going to drawers, so there's a drawer and a couple of tubs for bigger items. Uh, clear, things can't spill and get out, you've got, got a good access to everything there. There's a light in the top there, You'll turn it on and nothing happens until you do your circuit, circuit breaker, the light can go in and out. Hardly any fuses anywhere in the camper. It's all circuit brace, breakers because you can't go up to the nearest gum tree and ask the koala for a spare fuse if you fuse one, so circuit breakers. Here's our, the rest of our kitchen here. So again, these come out like this and there. And again, that drawer system in operation, like that. So you've got access to all your drawers, inside and outside. So we'll put those back in for the moment. That stops it moving around. This is a barbecue unit. It's designed to work on the transom of a boat. So you can put your meat or whatever on there, put that down. You can blow a gale out here. It's going to cook nice and evenly, uh, including quite windy conditions. The hot plate can be taken out and there's several of these things. You can put a roast in there, a cake, a bread mix, pasta bake, any sort of baking, back burner off, front one on, got a little oven. You can then put pots and pans and kettles in there and use it as a stove. That goes away. So you've got your hot and cold water there, you've got 12 volts there, and in behind there you've got access to your 240 volts. There's your gas bayonet there. Now for the good stuff, let's get this camper open. And rail in the door. Couple of poles we need. This pod has plenty of room in there for outside tables and chairs, sullage hoses, grey water hoses, drink hoses, your 240 volt uh, line, your solar panel extension lead, things like that fishing rods, somewhere to put all that sort of gear.
Well, first thing we're going to do is wind the pod down. Because the camper is roughly 1.1 metres high and 2.2 metres long, as soon as we do that, we increase the floor area by 50%. By the way, it's entirely possible to have one person preparing dinner while the other one's opening the camper up if you want to do it that way. Very light, easy action. Down come the stairs. the handrail. Now we'll open the main hardtop. There's two throwover latches. You can see the solar panel on the roof as the hard top comes into the open position. couple of clever spins. That's that part. Inside there are four captured bars that we have to put into place and four loose bars to put into place and the camper's up. So here we go. We've put two bars up to give a bit of room for the camera to come in. If it was dark, we've got a remote control here that turns our light on. So there's that. But it happens to be a warm day today. So first thing I'm gonna do is get a bit of air in here. couple of bars on this side and that's how it works you just simply push them into play like that and that and the main tents up and now there's four loose bars so number five Number six. Number seven. May come as a surprise. Number eight. Well, that's it. There's a few things to do on the outside as well.
pole and rope and we've got a few little loopy things to put round the site we've finished putting all the loops all the way around but there was two more poles we pulled out of that pot at the back do one you can leave them in the down position or in this up position two There it is. That's the sunshade in the upper position. If you bring it down to the lower position, you can wind the window, unzip the window inside and get an airflow through on a hot steamy night when it's raining. That solar panel that's up on the roof is now not much use to us because we've opened up the roof. So here we go. Disconnect from the hardtop. There's a couple of brackets on the back. Aim it at the sun. Our lead. We've measured this at the winter uh, solstice, midday, producing nearly 10 amps. 10 amps. So um, what we've got here is it's up on the roof working whenever we turn the engine off. When we get to where we want to camp, I work better in the shade and it works better in the sun. So let's put it out in the sun and us camp in the shade. Also the fly opens automatically when you open the camper. You don't have to do anything else. If you look up on the top there, it's creating a second line of insulation across the top of the camper. Well, time to have a look at the interior of the wedge tail. We'll start with the table and chairs. So, not a hard action. Well, this is the queen size inner sprung mattress. It can be the set, a choice of several inner sprung mattresses or a foam mattress if you prefer that. Uh, in underneath this cover, obviously there's the mattress itself. There's a mattress protector over that mattress, sheets, blankets, and if you need, a doona. Uh, the lights, the breeding lights on the bed are also under there. So the whole lot remains made up when you're going, so when you open it up each night, it's ready to go. Uh, the bed itself, when the camper closes, the canvas lands in the camper first and the bed comes in on top of it. With most designs, the bed's there and the canvas lands on top of it. Having it the other way around couldn't be an important point in wet conditions. So the, the mattress remains dry. Well, here's the bed with the covers removed. Uh, so everything was there on the bed already, uh, already made up, except for the pillows. The lights simply fold up into position, you can turn them on, so you've got LED reading lights there. Uh, on the other end, the base of the air cooler was there as well. We simply had to put 
the top part in and the cooler on top. Um, so we've got cool air blowing over there as well. There's full sitting headroom above that bed, a high ceiling to pull any heat that may remain away, uh, fine mesh all the way around and lovely views. The wedge tile is designed to be comfortable in a wide range of conditions. Um, the bed is two metres off the ground. Uh, you don't have hard walls, uh, so on a hot night, uh, it's not going to retain heat in those walls, uh, nor solid walls that are going to hold breeze back. There's fine mesh all the way around you, so the midges can't get at you, yet the breeze can come in from any direction. In addition, there's the cooler available or fans, if you feel the need. On a humid night, this awning out here can be brought down to a lower position with the window zipped down, so we can get the air through here. The awning above the end of the bed means that that window can be left open and the door, which also has fine mesh on it, can stay open because it's completely out of the weather as well. So you get a huge volume of air through the camper to get a more comfortable night's sleep. On a rainy day, this clear window is zipped up. The clear window at the other end of the bed is zipped up. So we've got good light coming into the camper and the rain can't drive in through the door. When the wind gets up a long way, I prefer to go find a more sheltered place, but some owners open their campers in those conditions. We've even had an owner that had their camper freestanding in a lot worse conditions than 100 kilometres an hour plus, and they were fine, a bit frightened. The camper is well able to withstand very high winds. On the very hot days at the shows, people come into the wedge tail and say, it is cool, relatively cool in here. Uh, that's their feeling. The high cathedral ceiling with the double canvas or fly roof, the fine mesh all the way around, letting breezes in and the heat rise and go away, and now the cooler, all seems to help. On the very cold nights, uh, the camper has a very heavily insulated base under the bed, uh, the double canvas roof, fly roof if you will. Uh, there's heavy insulations through all the walls of the camper and there's a space heater in here so it can be minus five degrees outside and 22 degrees inside the camper. That's not too bad. Condensation is also an issue that needs to be thought about. Uh, we get it on the walls, windows of our homes, bedrooms at night, winter. Uh, it appears in caravans and motorhomes and other campers. Um, it's very hard to deal with. We breathe out warm, moist air and it touches cold surfaces. There's our condensation. So there's six different design features in the wedge tail to try and minimise condensation. Haven't beaten it all in all occasions, but quite often it's a lot better than it would otherwise be. The kitchen is also inside the wedge tail. Um, there's a kitchen outside. So the outside kitchen's the best place to be for cooking smells, friends around, nice locations and restocking just the best place to be. But if there's thick dust on the ground, sloppy mud, rain's going through the site, there's more ants than there is sand, um, midges, sand flies, there's quite a lot of things out there that can make being outside not quite so pleasant. The kitchen works just as well on the inside. So these doors open and those drawers that you saw on the outside are also accessible inside. We can get at everything that were in the outside kitchen from the inside kitchen. If you want, there's also a stove top available for inside. We often use that for breakfast, but it's there as well for when conditions aren't so great. Next to it, we've got the fridge. Remember, it was on the outside, well now it's turned around on the inside, so we can access everything in here just as well as from the outside. We can also monitor the electrical system, see what's going on with the battery and all that sort of thing at night inside the camper without having to go outside because it's all just as accessible inside as it was on the outside. Well, this is the um, sink option opened up. There's a drainer on the left hand side and a cutting board on the right hand side. There's a glass lid, there's a stainless steel bowl. Uh, underneath the glass lid is a second drainer which will hold a couple of cups and knives and forks and plates. 
There's also a plastic tub that comes with it so you can chop up your fruit and vegetables or whatever, put all the scrapings in the uh, plastic tub. Uh, so that's one sink option. The other one is a simple stainless steel bowl and drainer. Underneath the sink is quite a bit of storage. Uh, if you want, you can put a Honda 2 kilowatt or similar generator in there. We'll supply tie down lugs for that, uh, for people that like to carry generators. Or it's a space that you can use for storing all sorts of other things and there's a shelf above that. On this side, uh, those two closed storage areas that you saw from the outside of the camper, this is the inside access to your clothes. So obviously you don't have to go outside to get at your clothes, even though you get at those from the outside during the day. There's those drawers slide in on the larger cabinet and on the in smaller one you've got the hatch in the top and it's got a little drain around to stop any water dripping in onto the clothes. This is the um, ensuite shower and toilet area. Um, so the toilet, uh, particularly good at night. Um, yeah, much better than having to go out and about trying to find somewhere to go. Uh, the shower uh, seems to get a thumbs up from uh, everybody. Uh, it gives you a pretty good shower before you go to bed. Uh, with a lot of campers you need to have your shower before the sun goes down uh, because you're out and about and then you get dirty during the evening. This one we wait until bedtime. It can be really really cold but because we've got the space heater we can have our shower and step out and go to bed clean. Also when it's time to pack up the next day there is no mess on the ground which means we're not leaving a mess behind and we haven't got filthy grubby uh, shower floors and all this sort of thing to put away. It's not an extra time constraint to put the camp, the, the ensuite away because it just folds up as part of the camper.